Hello, I am Ricardo Santos and I would like to present my capstone project, a requirement for advanced data science with IBM specialization. As for my project, I have developed a system of sentiment classification trained on Twitter data. So let's get started. As for the use case, I believe the subject speaks for itself. It is a fact that social media are a rich source of information and sentiment analysis is for a while a consolidated market practice for uh, variated solutions, including not only uh, social media monitoring, but also financial market monitoring, branding sentiment monitoring, customer experience management. So uh, at the end, the applications are really unbounded. As for the data source, the system was developed using the Sentiment 140 dataset, which is a public dataset containing 1.6 million tweets extracted using the Twitter API and categorized using machine learning algorithms. Um, there is a link in the presentation with, for the site. Uh, we can see also that the positive sentiment tweets were labeled with the number 4 and negative sentiment tweets were labeled with the number 0. The dataset also contains information regarding uh, ID of tweet, date, query, user, and Twitter's post. For this project, uh, only the sentiment label and the text input were used. An important point here is that to gain more time efficiency, the model was first developed using a random sample of 10% from the original data set. Once we have our random sample, we will start with some exploratory analysis. The charts below shows that our data set contains a balanced distribution of both positive and negative sentiment tweets. And uh, as we have seen in the previous slide, the original data set has tagged positive sentiment tweets with the number four. So in order to feed the model with an input label in the domain zero and one, positive sentiment tweets were retagged with the number one. Continuing with the EDA, for illustration, I display next at the left a couple of tweets uh, to show how noisy Twitter posts can be. They are more irregular and freely written than more formal sources like editorials or reviews. Such uh, irregularities call for a more rigorous data cleansing. In other words, text treatment before loading the input into model which we'll cover in the next slide. Here I list the text treatments executed to remove all sorts of noise and non initiation information for the analysis. The applied treatment will remove the URL links and www reference. I have also removed reference to, to Twitter's profiles and hashtags. I have removed also numbers and symbols and potential excess of white spaces. The chart below shows that after cleaning the text, we see no significant change in Twitter in tweets and character length distribution, indicating that no relevant loss of information has occurred. Continuing with the EDA, we see here the 100 most frequent words found in positive and negative sentiment tweets. What is interesting here is that we see a correlation between the meaning of the word and the sentiment associated with it. We can see, for example, in the positive word cloud, words like uh, glad, welcome, funny, enjoying. And in the negative word cloud, we see words like sad, sick, headache, lost. And this all may seem uh, a bit obvious, and it is, but this correlation is very important because this is how the computer will learn to differentiate the sentiment across the tweets. And just to give a counter example, 
sentiment analysis system have a hard time to identify and correctly classify text with irony. Why? Because exactly such texts lack the sole mentioned correlation between the word meaning and the sentiment. Here we see the ETL overview, where I highlighted the main actions taken. In terms of extraction, the data was extracted to a file storage service, in case Google Drive, but you, we could also have used uh, object storage as well. In terms of transformations, we have already covered the sentiment retagging and the tweets text treatment. There are two more transformations needed, the tokenization and patent that we will cover in the next slide. As for the loading part, the data set was split in training set and test set in proportion 8 to 20 before loading it into the model as the best practice dictates. Two necessary transformations that were not yet covered are the tokenization and padding. Tokenization is the process of converting each word in the tweet to a unique number. This is a necessary step because computers learn words through numbers, not characters. Luckily, such tasks can be performed using TensorFlow's method. I have highlighted here that an important decision point was made during these transformations regarding the size of vocabulary used. The problem here is that vocabulary size is an input for the model. So the larger the vocabulary size, the higher the number of estimated parameters. <clears throat> On the other hand, a smaller vocabulary size means a loss of information. I have done some research and it is estimated that an average English speaker uses around 20 to 40,000 words. So for precautions, I have set uh, vocabulary size to consider the 65,000 more important words. The, another necessary transformation here is padding, which simply is the normalization of the length of each tokenizing tweet by completing the vector of integers with zeros. Padding was performed using the Keras module. For modeling the sentiment, I have chosen as baseline model the Long Short Term Memory Network, in short LSTM, which is a special type of recurrent neural network, very used for natural language process tasks. And to challenge the baseline model, a uh, convolutional neural network, in short CNN, and a uh, hybrid LSTM CNN model were chosen. CNNs are a class of fit forward neural network, also very used in natural language process tasks. Um, and here below, we can see the model specifications in, in this first phase. I choose the most simple spe specification for our models. We can see here also that uh, since we are developing a binary classification system, the sigmoid activation function was chosen and activated for the three models. Here we see further specifications that were set uh, equal across the three models. For the loss function, the binary cross entropy function was chosen. I chose the add optimizer algorithm. The batch, batch size was set to 32 and 10 epochs were used. We see here also the model's summary. Each model has a relatively high number of parameters, around 8.5 million parameters. And this happens due to vocabulary size input in the first embedded layer, as we can see here up in the first line, as we have seen before in the tokenization section. So here we can see the training and evaluation results for the three models. Uh, a couple of remarks here. First, each model reaches a relatively high accuracy in the training set after just two to three epochs. 
and second at the second moment the model lands in the training set that is the accuracy get higher at a cost of a higher loss in the testing set which is a typical behavior of overfitting the model's results are summarized in these small tables here at the right Overall, the results are very similar, but the CNN model's execution was faster, also with a higher accuracy. In this slide here, the CNN model was revisited to increase its performance. A couple of different layers was tested, and at the final, we could reach an increase in the CNN mod model's accuracy in the testing set without any effect in its processing time. And as a final exercise, uh, the whole process was re-executed using this time the full 1.6 million tweets dataset. Uh, the results sh uh, show that the final CNN model has shown no increase in its accuracy using this full dataset. As an application and also for benchmarking, the proposed system was compared with an on-market sentiment analysis tool. The Vader was used for comparison. And for a couple of sentences, it was assessed uh, how both systems classify its sentiment. At the left, I have freely written some sentence, and at the right, we have how both systems classify the sentence. <coughs> the decision rule for the proposed system was uh, predictions uh, above 5,5.5 were tagged positive and otherwise they were tagged negative. For the Vader, the decision rule was slightly different because the Vader algorithm returns four classes of sentiments, positive, negative, neutral and a compound class. So the decision rule for the system was if the compound predictive value is above zero, then the sentence is tagged positive, otherwise it is tagged negative. And we can see that in general the results were very similar in both systems, which is a, a pretty good result. To summarize with some final comments, we saw that the system of sentiment classification based on the CNN model has presented good results in the testing set, around 80%. For a prototype, I'm very comfortable with this number. After training different uh, model specifications, I have arrived to an important conclusion that in sentiment analysis is more what the data can show than the model itself. And what I meant by that is that a very important task here is text treatment. The more efforts one spent in this step, the better we find the model will be. Here below, I list some potential developments that one could further explore. By that, I meant testing new layers, different model specifications, retuning the hyperparameters. We could also extend the model to identify multi-classes, moods, not only positive or negative. We could also train the model to learn irony. And one last solution could be revisiting the code with scalability in mind. So that is what I had in mind to present all the data set used on the Jupyter notebooks, the models, weights, and presentations one can find in my GitHub repository. Thank you for your time.